our, our next question that we have is from David Parker. Um, and this one's a, a little deeper, a little different of a question. He says, can you report on the NWSL steps to address this abuse whenever it might occur? occur? Is it anonymous and retribution free reporting really in effect? So he's really overarching and asking about the abuse and what policies are in place in the NWSL, Sandra. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I will take this one because I think we can only answer it with, with what we do know, right? Mm -hmm. And again, we're 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 looking ahead of 2022. This is our New Year's episode, but we have the information, we have the knowledge of 2021, right? That's the beauty about going into a new year, is hopefully having all the knowledge from your past to help sort of ensure that you don't make the same mistakes moving forward, right? And I think that's the only real way that we could tackle this question is we have to tackle it with things that we know. And what we know is that unfortunately, the NWSL didn't have an anti-harassment policy in place until 2021. And there are steps within that, right? And there is something within that where players are allowed to come forward or staff is allowed to come forward anonymously, hopefully retribution free to bring forth right their their concerns uh, with whatever it is that they are going through within the league. And what we saw and just to give an example out of, out of out of the reporting, one of the big thing, one of the big things that we all were paying attention to and covered was Meg Linehan's reporting out of the Athletic about uh, Sinead Fairley and Manashim and their stories, uh, following the story of Kaya McCullough in the Washington Spirit about how past abuse was brought up again uh, in light of this anti-harassment policy in place. But again, there was a bit of a failure and shortcoming to aid even these former players um, with that harassment policy. So I think with these experiences in the past, what we're starting to see is when you have a policy in place, you got to unfortunately give it some time to work. And what we saw in 2021 with a combination of responsible reporting from uh, analysts and reporters out there uh, is that this type of policy can hopefully be continue to be utilized in a positive way to ensure that there is accountability and that there is change moving forward in the league. So I, I hope that the league gets to a place where players don't feel like this is something they have to use, number one, but it's 100% important that it is there and in place. And I guess, you know, here in the beginning of 2022, we're just going to hopefully continue to manifest that uh, there are safe environments uh, for all of these players in place and safe environments for, for staff and, uh, and good coaches out there who want to coach great, even, even better people. Right. I, I think that's really all we can ask and hope for. And, and Sandra, you and I have spoken with um, executive director of the NWSL players association, Megan Burke, a number of times in her first and highest priority is to make sure that the players are safe and they feel heard. And if they don't feel they have anywhere to go, that they can always turn to her. And she always has her phone on and, and an ear open and a shoulder to lean on for any of these players. So uh, I think that the community that is within the NWSL and within the Players Association and within teammates on, on each team is growing as well. And, and because we have had so much exposed in 2021 that people uh, are ready f to say it and feel okay to open up about certain things. So let's just hope we keep moving in the right direction and um, players can stay safe, frankly.